Hello world, welcome back to Razor RC. Got another review video for you today. And what we have in front of us is the HTRC B6 V2 80 watt uh, RC charger. So HTRC uh, reached out to me and asked me if I was interested in reviewing this product. I said yes, so they sent one out to me. And uh, so yeah, we're gonna do a little uh, review of this today. So HTRC, as far as I understand, is a Chinese company pretty much just make RC chargers as far as I'm aware. Um, so they have a ton of different chargers, different price ranges and stuff. So this one sells for about $48 on Amazon at the time of this video. You can find uh, other prices at other uh, locations, but I did notice they make two versions, one with a power supply and then one without. So the one without the power supply is usually in like the $25 to $30 range. But you definitely want to get one with the power supply, obviously, unless you already, for some reason, have one. So, I'm going to do a little unboxing video and see what's inside this. Uh, some of the specifications. Input voltage, so you can run this off DC, or it comes with an AC to DC adapter. Charges up to uh, 6 amps. This is an 80 watt charger, so uh, pretty impressive specs for a fairly inexpensive um charger uh discharges up to two amps but i did notice it is five watts only so you usually will not get actually two amps uh draining does up to six cells uh does support pretty much all the uh, battery types that you'll want nickel cadmium metal hydride etc lithium high voltage life batteries pretty much everything you want so um yeah pretty neat little charger they also have some features that you will not normally see on a charger of this type such as resistance measurement so here's what's inside the box looks like we have alligator clips uh, for the DC input so I guess you could run this off like a car battery or something you got the crazy octopus uh, leads here so four millimeter bullet connectors and then it looks like you'll have all your major uh, connectors uh, everything from like an XT60 on down and then an EC3 on down so it does not have like the higher amperage ones like the um, EC5 and XT90s and the XT120s I believe they make but uh, this will cover most of the stuff that you want to charge uh, even tracks it's there so nice to see little uh, power cord and then here is the ACDC power adapter so if you got one of these I guess you could probably run it but um, let's see what the specs are on this so outputs 15 volts at 6 amps so that's what you want to do and then the actual charger itself is quite small it also includes a little lipo uh, charging sack so that's pretty neat to see um, nice little bonus one of these usually costs around seven or eight bucks so uh, pretty cool that they include that instruction manual actually seems semi intelligent it looks like they actually had a native english speaker actually uh go through this so one of the better manuals you'll you'll find coming out of asia in my opinion and so that's the box let's take a look at the actual charger this thing is quite small i mean it's about the size of my hand and um quite light as well so it comes in this blingy metallic gold uh, finish one side you've got the DC input uh, temperature sensor so I imagine it is monitoring to make sure this thing is not overheating uh, your standard stop left right and enter slash start buttons uh, your output four millimeter uh, plugs and then it's got integrated uh, balance ports uh, right into the unit itself so you don't have to have a separate charging board some heat sinks heat fins uh, little vent holes I think here on the bottom and then little rubber feet so yeah that's what's inside the box okay we got this plugged in and uh, three cell lipo battery connected so I figured I'd go through uh, what the actual features are in the menu system for this charger so once you plug it in uh, you can scroll through all the different battery types nickel metal uh, lithium etc under lithium this is also where you're going to select the different um, types of uh, batteries for lithium so for example you've got life lipo and lithium high voltage as well as lithium ion 
and stop this to go back. Um, but before we actually get into charging, um, let's kind of go through what the actual uh, menu system has. So one of the first things I like to do is go through the user settings whenever I have one of these types of chargers, because sometimes they're not set to exactly what you want. So you can adjust the key beep. You can uh, have a completion ring. Obviously, when you're done charging, it'll beep at you. Uh, the cycle waste time basically controls uh, how much delay there is in between charging and discharging. For example, when you're cycling a cell or a battery, uh, you can set the low input voltage. So you need a minimum of 10 volts, for example, for this charger to work. Uh, the temperature cutoff, 60 degrees Celsius by default. Uh, the capacity cutoff, so this is a common mistake a lot of people make with chargers is they don't set this high enough. So this is the maximum number of milliamp hours it will put into a battery. So if you're charging, for example, a 10,000 milliamp hour battery, you'd want to increase that. Um, if 8,000 is way higher than anything you might ever charge, you can decrease it just for a little extra safety. Safety timer, so it'll automatically shut off after uh, four hours here, it looks like. Uh, you, you can change the power limit. So I found this kind of interesting because this is an 80 watt uh, charger, but it looks like you can actually change this up to like 200 watts or so. I would not recommend doing that, so I'm just gonna leave that at 80 watts. And then um, the battery control. I, uh, oh, this I'm sorry, this is the balance control. I didn't quite understand what this meant. It looks like when it's balancing, a battery with all the different cells. You can try to uh, tune it so that it is either charging faster and it's not quite so uh, critical or you know paying as much attention to getting the balance exactly right or you can get it you know sort of in fast mode so that it just charges or you can go into like accurate mode so that it really makes sure every balance uh, every cell is actually balanced exactly the same. So let's go back in there. Uh, termination voltage control. So this uh, affects how you want this thing to behave for all the different charge modes. So for example, for LiPo, it normally charges up to 4.2 volts per cell, which is what you want to keep. You don't really want to change that. Uh, discharges down to 3.2 volts per cell. That's normal. Uh, lithium high voltage are a special type of lithium batteries that can charge up to 4.35 volts per cell. Uh, discharge down to 3.3 for those. And then lithium ion. Life batteries, they all have slightly different uh, cutoffs for their different voltages. Nickel metal hydride sensitivity, didn't quite understand this. I guess nickel metal hydride, they don't really actually measure every additional cell, so they're sort of tracking the actual charge uh, curve and then deciding how to turn off the voltage. Um, but you know, I, don't, I don't really normally use that. Uh, discharge down to 800 millivolts per cell. Again, with the NICADs, you can do the same thing. And then for the lead acid, uh, I guess it charges up to 2.4 volts per cell discharge. So yeah, though, that's pretty much termination voltage control. And then you can obviously reset the factory settings. Now, the other thing I want to go through is the additional function. So this charger does have some more features that a lot of chargers of this type do not have. So let's kind of go into that. So one cool thing is the battery status. Select your battery type and hold it down and it'll show you actually what it's currently running at. So this is, it tells you it's a three cell battery. It's currently at 11.43 volts, charged at 37% and go right arrow. And it'll show you the actual voltage of each individual cell. So that's pretty cool. Um, additional battery uh, status. It also has battery uh, resistance measurement. So this is again, uh, kind of a high end feature most chargers do not have. And so what it does is actually measure the resistance of every cell in this battery. So you got five milliohms uh, on one cell, five on another, and then six on a third. Uh, this actually will help you detect when you have problems with your batteries. So when, when batteries start to die, you'll notice that one of the cells starts going up really high, like 10 or 12 milliohms per cell. And that's an indication that that battery is on its way out. So actually a really cool feature. The other thing is if you get a battery with really low measurements, that battery actually have more punch. A lot of racers use this to try to find which battery pack is actually the best. So batteries with really low resistance will actually uh, put out a little more uh, amperage and power uh, for that battery pack. So you actually get a little bit faster uh, driving. So that's a pretty cool feature. Uh, the balancer, I didn't quite understand what this thing does. I mean, I, 
I mean, I understand that it's actually balancing all three cells, but I don't know if it's down to a certain voltage or what. So um, I read the manual and it does not really explain that all that well. So I can't really tell you what that is. If you guys know what that actually does, let me know because it was not super clear. Digital power is again, kind of a cool thing. You can actually have this uh, charger output a certain number of volts and amps in case you want to power something else. So you might want to power some other device. You can use this charger to do that and basically manually control what it actually outputs. So it basically out, uh, um, acts as a power supply. And the last thing is uh, the smart battery charge. Again, I don't really know what kind of smart batteries this thing uh, supports. It seems like there are maybe some uh, batteries out there like the, uh, you know, I batteries from Spectrum or the Traxxas Intelligent Batteries. I'm not sure if there's some way to control that, but um, I don't have any quote Spark batteries, so I was not able to really uh, use that. So yeah, that's all the extra functions that are available on this charger, and let's get into actually charging a battery. Okay, it's time to charge and show you what it looks like and how to actually charge with this charger. So I've got my 3700 milliamp LiPo battery. I've got the LiPo sack that this comes with. I've got it plugged into the balance uh, leads here on the actual charger and I'm using the four millimeter uh, plug. I actually had to run a different one because I am running EC5 on this battery. So uh, let's go ahead and cover that. You always want to charge inside a LiPo sack. Uh, these are fireproof so in case there's any damage to the actual battery and it's uh, catches on fire or something really bad, it's, you know, you're a lot more protected when you're using this fireproof uh, LiPo sack. So, we're going to get into actual charging. Since this is a lithium battery, you definitely want to obviously pick the lithium battery choice. And the next thing to do is uh, do select your battery type. So this one supports LiPo, lithium high voltage, lithium ion, lithium iron. And so since this is a LiPo battery, we're going to pick LiPo. Next thing to do is pick the actual amps that you want to charge at. So uh, for most LiPo batteries, if you have something like a 3.7 milliamp hour battery, you want to charge at 3.7 amps. So we're, you can obviously adjust that, pick different values, but um, we're going to do 3.7 amps. And the last thing is you always want to make sure you're balanced charging. Um, there are other types uh fast charge etc but you always 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 want to balance charge otherwise you could accidentally overcharge one cell and not the other and not really know if you're not actually measuring every single cell so you definitely want to do the balance charge and then once that's all set up hold down the start button it'll beep at you it'll check to make sure you got the right battery type and then it'll ask you to confirm don't forget to hit that to start and then it actually starts charging so while it's charging it tells you what's going on Tells you you've got a LiPo 3 cell battery, your balance charging, which you always want to do. Tells you the amps it's actually charging at. So it's charging at 3.7 amps, the actual voltage of the battery currently, how long it's been charging for, and then how many milliamps it's actually put into the battery so far. So for a 3700 milliamp battery, this should never go over 3700 milliamps. Um, otherwise, there's something wrong. And the other cool thing is you can actually uh, click on the status button and then show the uh, individual voltages of each individual cell. So yeah, that's pretty much how you actually charge. So my final thoughts on this charger are, uh, A, it, it pretty much covers everything you want out of a charger. So like I mentioned, it's pretty good power. It's 80 watts, which is higher than most, especially for a $50 charger. I think the pricing is really, really good, especially considering it, it comes with all these nice accessories, like a really nice, octopus cable uh its own power supply so you can run this off ac you can run it off dc it comes with even a lipo sack um so really nice charger quite compact i think this would make a really good travel charger so if you're traveling somewhere and you just want to drive at a track or uh you're you know you're flying somewhere this would be a nice little handy charger because it is so compact and puts out pretty good wattage um it has pretty much all the features you'd want, including some advanced features that I think are really nice. I think the resistance measurement in particular is really, really cool. Uh, some of the other stuff like the digital power output, I'm not personally not gonna use, but maybe if you need that, um, it's kind of neat to see that. Um, things I don't like about the charger, um, one, there's no fan. I mean, it did not seem 
to get overly hot, but um, you know, certainly if you're doing a lot of discharging, it might get a little bit warm. Um, the other thing is the balance boards are all plugged in um, directly into the unit itself. So it can get kind of tight to try to plug something, a battery into there directly while you're also charging. It'd be kind of nice if you had some, you know, you might want to make some extension leads or something like that. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think the price is really nice and it, it's a pretty good charge overall. The, really, the last thing I didn't like is some of these batteries seem like they didn't quite register all that well. I mean, they're a little bit cheap feeling um, batteries overall, but you know, no big deal. It is a fairly inexpensive charger. So definitely one of the ones I think to look at uh, if you're in, uh, if you have a limited budget for sure, um, one of the ones I think you get a lot of bang for the buck with this charger. So I am actually impressed overall. I'm gonna keep it and use it um, as one of my uh, you know, daily chargers, I guess. Um, so anyways, that's about it for my review. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe to my channel as always, and look for more videos soon.